Hey guys, we're back on LMB TV for our last segment. Now I'm here with Jeremy Ryan Slate. This guy's been absolutely crushing it. We've been friends for a long time now, and I've seen his momentum and growth so organically. And I've just seen this guy start getting new opportunities, meeting with incredible influencers, getting more fit and shredded each time I see him. <laughs> so thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good to see I you. I knew you'd like that one, bro. You weren't expecting it. You weren't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> Just real quick. So, dude, thank you for hopping on to LMV TV. I'm yeah, so man. happy to have you on here. Um, man, just for some of the people that maybe aren't so familiar with you, would you mind just introducing yourself to the audience and telling them what you're up to? Yeah, so um, my name is Jeremy Slate. I use uh, my middle name, Ryan, because there was uh, another actor that died in 2006, also named Jeremy Slate, so Google hates me because of that. <laughs> um, I am the founder and uh, host of the Create Your Own Life podcast. I've interviewed, um, at this point, I think, almost 350 different influencers. Um, I've grown a very large Twitter following, Facebook following. And uh, I'm really trying to help people create a life on their terms, man. What, what was like your inspiration to start that podcast? I had a conversation with my dad in, um, I want to say 2013, somewhere around there. Um, I was teaching high school, actually in Wayne, so not too mm -hmm. far from you know, where you guys were. Where were you teaching? Maybe some people uh, It's a Paul Catholic high school. Cool. Yeah, I taught it to Paul. And uh, I wasn't, you know, it wasn't really for me. I thought it was going to be something different than what it actually turned out to be. And uh, I'm like, dude, I'm just not happy. I'm just like, I'm, I'm miserable, so I'm like... Um, I found a network marketing opportunity. I jumped into it, made a little bit of money, um, but I was miserable. And I went full time into that. And my dad's like, "What are you doing? You're, you're throwing everything away to do this, you know, stupid pyramid scheme thing." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "You know, Dad, I want to create my own life." So I hung on to that for like two years um, as I did a whole bunch of different opportunities, got in the digital marketing space, and uh, started the Create Your Own Life podcast mm -hmm. because I wanted to help people create that life that I had been trying to create. And I had originally had a podcast few months before that that was horrible where mm -hmm. I was the leader and I was giving all this advice and it was because I became a student of experts mm -hmm. and trying to help myself create my own life that I was able to help others do the same. Right. So kind of like that John Lee Dumas approach where it yeah. was like you really want to put yourself around influencers as a learner and kind of shifted the vibe as opposed to coming as a knower it was like hey let me be a learner bring on people that have more expertise than I do and then leverage both their following and their expertise well it changes the flow too like it really does cuz like a lot of people are like oh what's your avatar who's your perfect person you're speaking to and really for me it was just mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. so i was able to ask questions that were really leading towards what i needed to learn and because mm -hmm. of that i attracted a lot of people like myself mm -hmm. that really wanted to learn that and the amazing thing is my credibility went up my knowledge went up and because of positioning i was noticed a lot better right. and got a lot more credibility mm -hmm. you know wide ranging mm -hmm. and i think something that's great now that you know we're speaking after we were just talking to that last panel yeah. is this idea of personal branding right so you know starting off create your own life podcast zero downloads zero followers mm -hmm. nobody knows you and now you're met with the challenge of how do i start gaining some initial exposure mm -hmm. how do i start gaining some initial credibility who are the people that I'm going to trick to come on my podcast, you know? I don't know about <laughs> trick, but yeah. You know what I mean, dude? Yeah. Like, who, who am I going to get on yeah, here yeah. Like, where I'm like, you know what I'm saying. So it's this idea, you know, how did you, you know, walk me through those initial mm -hmm. hurdles because I feel like there's a lot of entrepreneurs, too, that are dealing with similar things when it comes to creating their own personal brand or starting an online business. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back to Cardone every time cool. because the 10x rule is just something that I've built so much off of. This idea of taking 10 times the amount of action, sometimes 100 times the amount of action you want to take to get what you want mm -hmm. is huge. It's a really big deal. And um, the thing people don't understand is you always have a power base somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I had you know, different people I worked with. I had um, a small email list I've been building. I had a LinkedIn following. So I sent out 3,000 LinkedIn messages all manually. I didn't know they had any automation at that point, so by hand. Um, 250 different emails. Um, I sent 700 something text messages. Uh, another 200 and something from my email list, and I just got people to subscribe because that action early on is really, really important because mm -hmm. in the iTunes charts, you're ranked by the number of subscribes you can get within a 24-hour period. Gotcha. So by getting those number of subscribers, it really you know, was able to up what I was doing, and in my first 30 days, I did 10,000 downloads. Awesome. In 30 days? In 30 days. And how many guests was in that 30-day period of time? Uh... My first five days, I did guests every day, and then I jumped down to uh, three weeks, so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Cool. So in that first 30 days, um, probably with 10, a 9, 10, 15 12, days. 15, something like that. Cool. Yeah. And one thing that I've really admired and have seen you do very well is network with influencers mm -hmm. and also create this relationship where it's like, 
a give-give relationship. Yeah. Oftentimes, you know, influencers or people of influence are always feeling like pe- others are trying to leech off them, mm-hmm. ask for something of them. How are you able to early on and now put yourself in a position or pitch your podcast in a way that's speaking in terms of their interests, showing how it's valuable to them? Mm-hmm. You know, what strategies are you using you know, to get people that deep down you might think, oh, this person's better than me. Right. You know, and I think a lot of people are dealing with that. They're, we get timid. We don't want to reach out to people that are better than us. It's very easy to reach out to people that we know are going to answer. We know that we can chat with them. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, the biggest thing I'm teaching in personal branding is the idea of having a platform. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be a podcast. It could be a blog. It could be a YouTube channel. Um, but for me, um, you know, being seen on video, this is different for me. I'm used mm-hmm. to just sitting behind my microphone, you know, in my uh, pajamas or something and nobody really seeing me. Um, so it's having that content strategy gives you a platform and that gives you something you can give to people. Mm-hmm. Because if you say to somebody that's got a book launch, you know, I know you have a book coming out in 60 days, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest things that you have to realize as a content creator is how can you serve the people that are giving you their time. Mm-hmm. So one of the first things I ask them is, what's the biggest thing you're promoting right now that we can talk about? And you know this, you're on my show. So I'm going to find out how I can promote what you're doing mm-hmm. along with me trying to learn at the same time. So if I can do that, they're going to start talking to other people. They're going right. to start referring to me. Mm-hmm. And because of that, the more expert guests I've interviewed, the more I'm able to say, well, I've interviewed Jeff Hoffman, I've interviewed mm-hmm. Grant Cardone, I've interviewed um, Modest Yahoo. That was a fun one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you start being able to get more and more and more people because mm-hmm. of the credibility you're gaining. So that's something for me that's always worked. And then also networking by just really serving them. Mm-hmm. When you really give somebody a great interview and just really serve them, they want to introduce you to people. That's right. how I met Hal. Yeah, experience? that's how I met Hal Elrod from American Morning. Awesome. Because I gave somebody a great interview. He goes, "You know what? I'm friends with Hal. I'll introduce you." And that's really what, how you have to look at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you're starting to build this credibility, mm-hmm. um, what's your follow up like? You know, one of my friends, his name's Tim K. He owns a page on Daily Dose. Maybe you guys followed on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He talked about this idea of you know giving gifts, and he talked about how you know peasants would know how to build relationships better than we even know now. Right. right now, people are always going up to somebody and, and asking for something. Yeah. But, you know, taking before we're making a deposit. Mm-hmm. And he brought up this idea where peasants, you know, would go to the king and say, hey, here's a gift. Here's something that I can give to you, the best that I can offer. And then the king says, oh, thank you for thinking about me. And here's the case of the kingdom. What do you need? Sure. When you're talking with these guests and these influencers, Do you have any strategies that are making their time with you special, memorable? Is there a follow-up where, like, you're reaching out to them and saying, hey, you know, thanks for being on my show. How are you building that long-term relationship with your guests outside, you know, just the interview? Is it that you're focusing on talking about what makes them happy? Mm -hmm. Are you making them feel accomplished? You know, how do you do that? Well, I think the biggest thing is, because this is totally out in a lot of places, is really getting into communication with somebody Mm -hmm. and really getting onto a level where they're having a conversation like they can't have before. And I get to a lot of interviews a lot of times and they get to the end and they're like, wow, that was amazing. I feel like you really know me because you spend time finding out particular things about them. Um, I was a history major and I studied literature in England for a while. Mm-hmm. And um, I bought a book while I was there that was um, a, colli- a bunch of different works by G.K. Chesterton, one of my favorite authors. And I sent it to one of the guys I was interviewing. And he gets this, he goes, wow, you sent me a hundred year old book that, you know, may have had a lot of value for you, but mm-hmm. it was really important to me. How can I help you? Mm-hmm. And because of that, he was introducing me to more people, and it really created me as a more valuable person because I'm looking to help them and support them in their mission. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know Tim Ferriss has talked about it before. One of the biggest things that people, when they're approaching and say, oh, will you mentor me? Will you do this? Will you sit down and have a cup of coffee with me? Well, that's great. They want a, you know, another unpaid full-time job. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. not what they want. They want to figure out how you can help them and you're going to be able to get a lot more and create opportunities mm-hmm. for yourself that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I want to dive in a little bit deeper here yeah. of, you know, I want to draw out some value from, you know, download zero to download 10,000. Mm-hmm. And then also highlight, you know, that next range, whether you were dealing with growing pains, scaling mm-hmm. pains, you know, whether it was from 50K to 250K yeah. or it happened from 100K to 250K. You know, but I just want to first start of, you know, what are some things that our audience can draw value from on the first 10,000 downloads, sure. you know, and where you're at as a person, where your business is at, again, gaining credibility, doing things for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some strategies that you have for somebody else, whether they're doing a TV show, their first 10,000 views, yeah. you know, their first 10,000 downloads, etc. Well, like I was saying, that thing is how many people can you reach? And you need mm-hmm. to figure out whatever that platform you're working on is, what's the metric? 
and for podcasting is downloads. So it was reaching as many people as I could and getting them to subscribe and getting them to leave a review and getting them to do that. So the first 10,000, like that's basically what it was. And then once I hit that, I was pretty consistent then for probably about the next year. And I really didn't see any growth that I was at about 10,000 mm -hmm. and that was it. So I started consistently concentrating on getting press. And that was the really big thing that changed the game for me. And I think a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I want to get on Forbes, or I want to get on Inc., mm -hmm. or I want to get on all these different places, but they're on step 19. Right, right, They haven't right. figured out step like 0.5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, we don't realize there's like, we're all part of a small pond, right? Like, mm -hmm. like for me, I was, I'm from a small town called Hamburg, New Jersey. It's five-eighths of a mile. There's literally nothing there. And we have a weekly newspaper that every time I write a press release and send it, they'll probably run it. Mm -hmm. So you need to Just because the sample right, size is sample size big. is so small. So mm -hmm. you need to figure out like, number one, why are they going to care about your story? So you need to tell it in such a way that it's going to impact. Mm -hmm. And number two, what's your small pond? It could mm -hmm. be your university. It could be a Rotary Club. It could be many different things. Your high school, or something. right? Your mm -hmm. high school. There's going to be somebody that cares about your story. And once you collect enough of those, mm -hmm. you can then present yourself to getting contributors to different publications. Right. Like writing for business.com and a bunch mm -hmm. of other different places like really helped me. Mm -hmm. It helped mm -hmm. me to build my brand and then start storing those things on a media page in my website. Mm -hmm. And once I really started working on co curating more content than just my podcast, I started to see the, the numbers uptick. Right. And I'd probably say since December of, of last year, I've seen about a 20% increase every month on the month before. Awesome. And from your following or from, from the my, downloads? From my, from my downloads. Cool. And, I, and the interesting thing, too, is once you start concentrating on you know, getting press and things like that, you need to put the content machine in place. Mm -hmm. you know, find like a social jukebox or a Meet Edgar or something like that. And so, what are those two platforms? Yeah, just so, so Meet Edgar is a platform that it creates like different, different buckets. And I can say, like, these are my motivational posts. These are my podcast posts. And it's going to automatically post them every single day. So now I have a content machine and I have a better chance of people finding it. Mm -hmm. But now here's the thing is engaging with those people that find your content. Mm -hmm. And because of doing that, I saw my following go from uh, in January of 2016, I had 200 followers on Twitter to I'm now at 38,000 on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. really concentrating on engaging with people and consistently putting out content. Because right. especially on Twitter, which is a platform where things are out there for 15 to 30 seconds. You need to give people more of a chance to find them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And something that I wanted to ask you yep. about, and I really loved how in our last segment, you know, we brought up this topic of personal branding. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, um, so in this day and age, in the social media economy, what are your views on personal branding? Is it something that we have a choice? Is everyone a personal brand? You know, I've oftentimes heard that you know your first and last name is your personal brand. So long as you're living, so long as you're breathing, right. you have a personal brand. If you're on social media, people can find you. Mm -hmm. You have a personal brand. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true, not true? Is it something we can choose? What do you think? I, I think it's absolutely true, and I think you know Gary Vee is a great example of how things are changing. You know, people know Ga uh, VaynerMedia because they know Gary Vee. Mm -hmm. And I think the days of big brands are really changing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually cool because it's humanizing it more. And it's giving the individual a real chance and a real ability to do things. So, you know, I really do think that, number one, the personal brand is here to stay. And number two, you have to look at it as this ability to reach and impact more people. Right. Because I know for myself, when I first started my podcast, I had a really difficult time with, oh, I don't want the attention, I don't want this stuff, I don't want, I don't want to make money on it because I'm an artist and I really want to share this mission with people and share this message with people. But if you don't think about those things and if you don't think of it like a business, you're not going to be able to reach as many people. Mm -hmm. And you can really have an amazing impact when you do that. So mm -hmm. I think really... You just have to understand that it's just it's just how the game works. Mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. how the game works. If you want to make a bigger impact, you know you may have a chance if they pick up your YouTube video and it gets a million views. But that's it's a way very, better. See, it's a small be, chance. It's way better to like yeah. have your destiny in your own control. Yeah, you need to curate the content and you know choose your own path in that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I think that's something too. Because and I'm I'm really very much curious to dive you know deeper into this because there's a lot of artists that I find that you know they run into this head you know and and one thing too is my girlfriend fashion designer fashion artist mm -hmm. you know and this is something that I've like talked about with her she'll often get so lost in her art that it'll actually blind her from the business side of it like right. hey Veronica that actually looks amazing you know that's way better than it needs to be in terms of the mission the, the object that it's supposed to have yeah. this content's gonna get you views this piece of work is looks really great this sketch looks awesome the person's mm -hmm. gonna like it you know, but as artists, we sometimes get lost in our own sauce mm -hmm. because we're so attached 
you know, and, and, and I wonder too is, you know, I, and now with social media, it's this idea of like, you know, the business artist. Yeah. It's right, now that we have this vehicle that can accelerate our art, that can accelerate our messages, mm -hmm. that we've never had before, you know, right. we're usually reliant on print and media, we don't really have this ability to self-publish so much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just asking yourself, well then, you know, as an artist, what is my responsibility or obligation to become more skilled in this very linear thing that's not artistic at all, that, yeah. is, that is marketing, that is creating content, that is building an audience. Well, here's, here's the thing to that, though, is I think traditional media, it's disappearing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how many online contributors are paid anymore? How many, um, how many real journalism majors are out there anymore? It's just, it's not the same. Right. And that's why I think, as an artist, you have a responsibility to tell your story because nobody's going to look for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to kind of be the one to put the narrative out there mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. nobody's going to look for you in that way. And something, too, that you've really distinguished yourself from really so many others is the fact that you've done over 300 episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, so just this idea of being consistent. Obviously, I can tell that you're just consistent overall because you're fit, right? So this ability okay. to, to <laughs> stay fit, you know, it, it's, it's, just this, it's just this idea. You know, you sure. really can see where, you know, threads can really implement in people's life. You know, it's not a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, so what are some tips and tactics that you've had in your life to stay more consistent, to stay focused when times are getting tough, to continue growing something when you're not seeing the growth that you want, yeah. but you're still scheduling three guests a week. You're still you know, out there in the trenches. You're still hustling, sending out hundreds of messages. Mm -hmm. you know, is it a mental framework? Was it a piece of paper? Was it a content creation schedule? You know, a, how'd you do a, it? There's a couple pieces to that, and the one is just knowing why you're doing it, mm -hmm. because I want to empower people to create life on their own terms and create freedom for themselves. Mm -hmm. and, that is number one my vision but number two is having systems mm -hmm. you know I have a running content calendar of I know all my episodes that are coming out for the next 60 days mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. all running scheduled so you have less of an excuse to say you know basically oh I'm gonna quit mm -hmm. because you have two months of content out there man so right. it, it makes a big difference and that's what you really have to think about is what systems can I put in place you know mm -hmm. my editing is very systemized it's done in a certain way gotcha. um, the way I find guests um, I really don't have to look for them anymore because mm -hmm. a lot of times they find me but the way I find guests is very systemized so when you have systems in place it's a much easier way to do it mm -hmm. um, and it's really gonna make it le you know it's gonna make it harder to quit you know mm -hmm. what I mean mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. way and if you could share one message with the mm -hmm. audience whether it's about life or business you know mm -hmm. what would that message be the message would be um, don't get stuck in the framework of what you think life has for you because for me, like, you know, I got my master's in history and I thought I was going to be a college professor. Didn't work out that way. Um, you need to really understand that maybe the framework isn't for you and, you know, you can leave normal behind and you mm -hmm. can get outside of that, man, because mm -hmm. it's just society isn't traditionally built the same for everybody. You mm -hmm. can create your path, and that's what I really want people to understand. I like that, and that's why I love that our missions are so aligned. Create yeah. your own life and leave normal behind is very very synonymous and you know the final question is what do the words leave normal behind mean to you? Well it means just that man, it means finding your own path, it means creating life on your own terms and it means not really letting society tell you you have to do things one way when mm -hmm. you know you are so much powerful more of a being to go do it on your own. Thank you man, so I appreciate Brother, you, so you so much, much Jeremy. Man. Uh, before we hop off I want to acknowledge you man, your consistency and being a leader in this space, you know you're a beacon of someone that's doing it the right way, building an authentic brand and in the trenches and not showing any bullshit, dude. And, and I'm really very much appreciative for our friendship and for a lot, a long, bright future to come. Love it, man. Thank, thank you, you so bro. much. You rock. Appreciate it, man. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's LNB TV show, episode 31.